Danger Dolan. It was only about two years ago that this channel really took off, seemingly overnight, and ever since then, all the videos combined have generated about a million views every day. And that's a lot of people. An unimaginable amount, and it is scary. I'd be much happier putting out one high quality video per week and just leaving it at that. Unfortunately, YouTube's algorithms heavily favor constant churning out of content to the extent that you actually hit a glass ceiling and plateau if you're only putting out one video every so often. Before Mr. Nightmare or even blame it on Jorge, my favorite YouTube channel used to be Danger Dolan. Back in 2015, I would always tune back into this creator to see what weird list video he put out next. But over the years, his content has slowly slipped away from consciousness, not just for me, but for many others. What exactly happened to this formerly popular creator? What caused the fall of Danger Dolan? We begin with Daniel Johnson creating his former main channel called The DD Guides, which in recent years was renamed. It was created on November 19th, 2012, and a video was posted on the same day. He mainly posted content about World of Warcraft, Pokemon, Starcraft, and other games. He would post this stuff for quite a while, but decided to switch things up a bit in early 2014. He began showing his face more, starting with a tongue-in-cheek Loot Crate unboxing, which many seemed to like. Looking forward to opening this one because it's going to be my last one ever. I have cancelled my subscription to the Loot Crate Cult because I'd rather save up for a car, which is infinitely more useful. So without further ado, let me just open this ridiculous box and see what's inside. And within the next month, Dolan would begin posting gaming related list videos which ranged from top 10 most overhyped video games to 10 creepiest things in World of Warcraft and other content along those lines. But with this, he decided that list videos were the way to go and made an announcement. In March 2014, he created a list focused channel called Danger Dolan where he would post top 20s, 15s, 10s, whatever he wanted. And it began doing pretty well with him quickly gaining views and attention over his work. The first ever video on it, titled 20 Largest Animals of All Time, is even sitting at 14 million views, and all the other videos surrounding it would do just as well, if not better. And he would also post his video game related list on his now second channel, since it fits the focus of that one more. It would later be renamed to Danger Dolan Gaming. Honestly, all of his content here still holds up, like 20 Most Useless Inventions Ever Made, 15 Worst Toys Ever Recalled, 15 Incredible Human Survival Stories, 15 terrible road signs, and much more. And these really weren't clickbait either, it was straight to the point, no overly long intros, some not even having any at all, it was pretty much just a quality version of Watch Mojo with actual heart put into it. Dolan just wanted to talk about weird shit, and oh boy, did he do that. Plus his thick Australian accent added a lot of charm to the videos, especially when he would record slightly buzzed. It honestly made these more entertaining. He would travel faster and faster until BAM! His bike starts to fly, and he gently ascends towards the sunset. When in reality, your kid has fucking died, and now you need to write on his tombstone, cause of death, Fisher Price toy. And in August 2014, the channel would reach the coveted milestone of 1 million subscribers, which he would soon top various times. To me, a big turning point for the channel was this video. It seems simple, but trust me. Dolan goes over the results of his first ever contest, picking his 2015 logo. A lot of good entries came through, which would be in his channel's background art for years to come, but the winner came up with this. Her name was Shima Luan, who would be very important later on in the story. Looking back, a lot of people really didn't like this new logo, but to me, it really doesn't look that bad. And every year since, Dolan would do this contest to find his next face of the account. He also reached 2 million subscribers at this time, and this kept him motivated. The list definitely got stranger in a good way, focusing on dumb products, weird stories, and a bunch of other dumb things you probably didn't need to know. He also decided to expand his horizons YouTube-wise, and announced a new channel in April 2015. It's called Danger Dolan Movies and has about 20 videos on it. There are mainly movie center list videos and reviews. It's just okay, but Dolan stopped posting on it by the end of that summer. It was just easier to post these sorts of videos on the main channel. All the likes and comments were disabled, even on that announcement video. Oh, and in said video, he also stated how he was looking for voice actors and others to work for him in the future projects. 
This was a good decision on his part, and the voice actors he got really livened up the list. The first was Dolan's own brother, who would later be referred to as Zaragamba. His first video was called 15 Things You Didn't Know About Skyfall in April 2015. Then there was Hellbent, who first appeared in the video called 10 Dumbest Band Things Ever from May 2015. He's a really great narrator with his deep voice giving lots of humor to these videos. For example, because students were getting too hurt at recess, uh, Port Washington Middle School has banned all ball games and rough play. This prohibits kids from playing football, soccer, baseball, lacrosse, or rough tag. Cartwheels are only permitted if supervised by a coach. At this stage, cloud watching is okay, but stay tuned for further development. Hellbent himself has been on YouTube since 2007 and mainly does gameplay videos and live streams. He's appeared on over 100 of Dolan's videos since this and has become the second most prominent narrator. There was also this narrator referred to as Pipe Attack, who only showed up for like a few videos. He pretty much disappeared and I can barely find anything about him online. To me, having four total voice actors is a perfect amount to have. Also, Dolan was still the most prominent narrator and even reached two more subscriber milestones through the rest of 2015. His videos really peaked, with the most viewed one of all time being 30 Disturbing Things Found on Google Maps. And other hit videos included 15 Most Disturbing Disney Secrets, 30 worst Google autocompletes ever, 50 lies that you still believe, 30 worst logo fails ever, and 5 unexplained sightings caught on tape. The latter of which featured Slapped Ham, a fellow Australian channel that also posted similar content in their own style. With Pipe Attack just randomly gone, Dolan hired a new narrator, Shimu Luan, the winner of his 2015 logo contest to appear with him in a video called 13 Inappropriate Secrets in Kids Shows in September 2015. She had a lot of voice acting experience already, with videos on her personal channel containing readings of short stories. Eventually, she would post bloopers from her appearances in Dolan's videos. At the end of her first list, they made a pretty big announcement. A new channel was created called Super Planet Dolan, which would involve animated videos going over different questions, and the concepts evolved from this, with eventual songs and other weird sketches. They even got some pretty cool guest stars in these, like Slapped Ham, Boogie2988, and even Critical of all people. What's up everybody, it's Critical. I'm here to imbue my wisdom all over you like a gentle summer breeze. Let's do this sh <coughs> Yeah, the Moist Man himself appeared on Super Planet Dolan. This was actually my first exposure to him back in 2015, and since then he has remained one of my favorite YouTubers. On the main channel, the focus narrators were still Danger Dolan, his mysterious brother, Shima Luan and Hellbent, but by the end of the year, many new narrators would appear. First we have Pringle the One, who I actually really like, then Melissa, who I don't like at all. She just sounds like a bland watch mojo type narrator who doesn't really have a lot of personality with her voice, and I know that might sound type of critical coming from me, but it just didn't fit with the other narrators. Then is Nixion, who mainly does gaming content. He is good in small doses, but comes across as too similar to with Hellbent's narration style. I actually didn't like Doopy that much when she debuted, but she grew on me. She can be a bit much at times in her appearances, but whatever. There were a couple of other one-off narrators, but these are the main 8 that we would see leading into 2016. Many, including myself, saw a slight dip in quality with these videos, as Dolan seemed to focus on quantity rather than quality. There were even times that he would just post on a daily basis. A lot of people are now working with Dolan, with narrators, scriptwriters, and animators. I still tuned into their latest videos, just not as much. But on August 31st, 2016, the now named Planet Dolan had reached 5 million subscribers. And a day later, to celebrate this, a bunch of crew members came together and posted a live stream. It was honestly a really cool experience, as they clearly had great chemistry. They seemed really passionate about their work and what's to come. But sadly, this is the biggest turning point in our story, and not a good one. Because if you noticed, one of the big members of the team wasn't in this live stream. The last video Shima Luan ever appeared in was called Do Penguins Have Knees? Dolan Life Mysteries, posted September 25th, 2016, but many had noticed she had gone dark before this, and she had. Since her last appearance was in an animated video, the audio was recorded several months before release. The last post on her personal channel came out in April 2016, and was a 50,000 subscriber special, which is an unscripted way to thank her fans. At the time, Dolan simply said that he and the crew knew that she was safe, but that she pretty much stopped talking to everyone and had become inactive on all of her social media accounts. 
A year later, Dolan made an update on this stating that he hopes she's okay, keyword being hopes, and he mentioned how Shima had gone dark numerous times before, but never like this. This was pretty worrying for a lot of people. What did happen to her? Why did she leave? Is she okay? Of course, like any other internet mystery, people began coming up with theories to explain why she vanished. Some thought that she died or was in critical condition, others thought she got doxxed. Many false leads came up, including a really horrible ARG made by someone of poor taste. The few leads we did get were online sightings, including from a community Minecraft server of all places. For almost four years, we barely got any leads on what happened to her. This was until early 2020, when Scare Theater made two videos covering all of this. Both Helbin and a PD member named Jamcat gave him their side of the story to what happened. Can't say anything outright, because again, this is a real person, so it's not like you can just say something that you don't really have any more information on. Dolan's already said what he can say, and like, you know, you have your whole laws and stuff about internet privacy, or, uh, you know, you don't want to say something bad about a coworker. The reason why Dolan or anyone else doesn't say they are certain of Shima's whereabouts is so that they don't leak too much information out there. The PD crew does know she is safe, and that's all that matters. Weirdly enough, on December 23rd, 2020, her channel profile picture was changed to this. A black and white image of fall leaves. Did she get hacked? Could she possibly return? Or was this just some random thing she decided to do? Helbert, in my opinion, handled the situation best. He was actually really close of her, but he does highlight another missing narrator. Pipe Attack. I'm surprised nobody talks about him. He appeared in a few big videos around August 2015 and just vanished. No information online can be found besides his name and his voice. He was acknowledged in a 2017 video, but yeah. Let me put this into perspective for you. Over the course of two and a half years, the Planet Dolan channel gained 5 million subscribers. And from then till now, 5 years. The channel has only gained 800,000 subscribers. That really isn't a lot when you think about it. The channel's growth has been static ever since they reached the 5 million milestone. But why? It's not like they don't try either. They actually did try some new things besides list videos. In July 2016, PD started uploading Reddit story videos. These were semi-animated compilations of stories submitted to them, all with some sort of theme. The first one was about weird ways people cheated on tests, with the animated counterparts of PD characters representing them. They were really great when they first came out, but got old by early 2017. They started to focus more on shock value with the disturbing and weird thumbnails. A spin-off came out in December 2016 where the crew would read out messed up fanfiction. I actually really liked these, plus they got critical to voice in three of them. One is a narrator, one is himself marrying Hellbent, and one is Shimu Luan. Yes, they had this deep-voiced god play a soft-spoken cat character. It's actually genius. I could be your Frank. Cried Shima. Nah. <laughs> Replied Pipe Attack, who then coughed up more blood before dying. <laughs> no, you mustn't be dead. I must now destroy hell for this deplorable turn of events. But they didn't post these as much, and they disappeared after 2017. The channel still posted list videos, but they were mostly just retries of earlier topics, or just really dumb. Really fucking dumb. They pretty much turned themselves into a WatchMojo clone mixed with weird Reddit stories. I'm still subscribed to them for old time's sake, but I really watch a new upload. Even with all of this, the Planet Dolan brand still has some pretty big things happen to him over the years. First of all, Dolan, his siblings, and some others attended VidCon Australia. He even appeared on an industry panel about team building. In addition to that, this is the initial launch of Planet Dolan merchandise. He also released a book titled Danger Dolan Countdown, which was pretty much just previous list but in written form. It was released by Pan Mac Mill in Australia in November 2017. 2018 saw the release of Planet Dolan merch online, along with a mobile game called Dolan Cart. This was actually inspired by a music video released on the Super Planet Dolan channel that many wanted to see happen. And because of the previous year's apocalypse, a Patreon was created which helped to maintain the animation stuff. They actually still had occasionally posted on it, with Dolan and Melissa as the focus instead of Shima. But what happened to the channels recently? Well, the gaming channel, now referred to as Danger Dolan, hasn't uploaded since January 2018, so it's dead. Super Planet Dolan hasn't uploaded since November 2020, so it's probably dead as well. But what about the main channel? That might be dead too. The last upload was a Reddit story time from May 2021. 
I thought that maybe he still streams on Twitch, but it's been two years. Where did he go? Because I'm having a hard time figuring that out. Why has Danger Dolan stopped posting? Well, it just wasn't worth it to put out content. Even though as a shit ton of subscribers, it's been about a year since the video has received 100,000 views. But why has his channel stopped getting views? Well, to me at least, people started watching the channel due to his authenticity and quality put into it. He uploads somewhat frequently when he started list videos, with all topics being unique or pretty interesting. Adding a few additional narrators was a good touch, since the first few were unique from one another and added flavor. But Dolan added way too many. He also expanded the channel way too much in such a short amount of time. I mean, think about it. In August 2015, he was still a small entity brand-wise and it was just a couple of people. But in January, he had an entire crew consisting of 8 narrators and 20-something animators and writers. He never really slowed down after Super Planet Dolan and kept trying to expand in other ways. It sometimes worked, but not always. Plus, Shima going missing affected the channel a lot. She was one of the biggest names on it. A lot more people began watching this content because of Shima, and after a while, it just seemed like another soulless YouTube channel that would post daily for more views. And more overexposure to mediocre videos led to less views and caused a multi-year decline. Plus, the clickbait thumbnails made it seem tacky. It all just felt very different from earlier content. However, I don't want to end this video on a bad note. I still really like this channel, or at least before 2017. Occasionally, I still watch these videos for some nostalgia or for an easy listen. I'm really not going to remember it for the bad stuff, just the good, like Helmet's sexy voice, Dolan being hammered a quarter of the time, and some breathtaking thumbnails. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!